Today on the show, we've had our sip of the blue juice that makes us worse, and we can see the future. We are here to tell you what we see. Mm, mm, And what we mm. see is Grimace returning again for Water of Life themed blue shamrock shakes. That's right. That's right. And this time, he's Uh. teaming up with Mr. Peanut, who's also (laughs) back. Oh, is he? Didn't they kill him in that one commercial and then resurrect him? <laughs> Is he Gola? <laughs> Is a Gola Mr. Peanut? He's got metal eyes now. <laughs> right, right. We, we still have to trigger his memories, though, so he has to go through a traumatic event. <laughs> Welcome to Gamjabar, your guide to the iconic world of Dune. We'll be exploring the themes, philosophies, and characters found in the sandy depths of this vast universe, from Frank Herbert's groundbreaking novels to the adaptations on film and TV. My name's Abu. My name is Leo. And Leo, what a month it has been. Dune Part (laughs) 2, all the Uh excitement around the franchise. I can't wait for today's little update news episode. This is one we've been chatting about for a while, but basically today, folks, we want to take a look ahead, perhaps tap into our prescient abilities, as weak as they may be. (laughs) Uh We want to take a look at what's ahead for the Dune franchise. Right. And in particular, today's episode, I would say, is geared toward the new listener who perhaps just discovered Dune for the first time, is maybe reading the book for the first time, just found the show. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're that someone and you're wondering, okay, what now though? Like yeah. Dune Part 2 happened. It was Everyone super loved fun. It. it was great. It was amazing. Yeah. Like I'm super invested in Dune now, but what happens next? Today is the episode <laughs> where we get into that. Zendaya's mad. She's off on a worm ride. I guess Stilgar's <laughs> on a spaceship now. <laughs> Jessica's talking to... Yeah. What happens right. now? We've got the scoop. Yes. Now, we're also going to be talking today about what the next few months of Gum Jabbar looks like. So if you are a longtime listener or if you have listened to a few of our episodes and you're like, oh, dang, this is pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. What can I expect? We're going to be talking about that. We'll also be talking about our Heretics of Dune book club. Stick around for that. Ooh, what a tease, what a tease. I know. So very quickly, before we get into it, housekeeping. Housekeeping. No spoilers today. Today is a news-focused episode. We're going to be talking about the larger world of the Dune franchise as it exists today and kind of looking ahead at the movies, TV shows, games, comics, all the great Dune things coming down the line. Right. So no spoilers for the books themselves. Indeed. And as always, we have to shout out our Quisats Hatterack level patrons. And we have to. No, we want to. We want to shout them out. These are yeah. C.R. <laughs> Spruill, Case Aiken, Daniel Dion, <laughs> Jonathan Lambert, and Roman Caballo. Hello. Guys, the amount of generosity and the amount of support makes a world of difference. As you all know, we've said it many times. It's about 20 hours of work <laughs> per episode. So it means the world to have your support. It does. And of course, our thank you extends to all of our patrons for as little as a $2 a month. You can help us keep the lights on and all that fun junk that's right thank you so much we're so grateful okay without further ado yeah let's just dive in leo let's look at what's ahead (laughs) for the dune franchise starting with the movie of course yeah the biggest thing to happen to dune in many years i would say denny villeneuve's dune part one and dune part two obviously part one was a hit on many levels yeah both critically and commercially it would go on to win six oscars yeah and we suspect dune part two will do similarly well at the oscars next year as well yeah it has officially taken the zeitgeist by storm it's put frank herbert's iconic universe on the map i would say for a whole new generation of listeners and it's very exciting to be a dune fan at the moment but this naturally begs the question we got dune part one Then we got Dune Part 2. Right. When is Dune Part 3, and is it happening? (laughs) It's going to do the Apple thing where it's like Dune Part 2S. And you're like, what? (laughs) (laughs) What? It's just an incremental movie upgrade, actually. (laughs) Point two two point five. It's just a a holiday 
special. <laughs> yeah. So to clear this up, because I've talked to a lot of people about this in the last like month, basically Dune Part 2 across the board, I think a lot of people are like, this was a more enjoyable movie than Dune Part 1. Yeah. Even yep. though Dune Part 1 was already great, this was so much better. So people are going, what is next? And Frank answers that question with five sequel novels. <laughs> yep. There's basically Dune, Dune Messiah, Children of Dune, God Emperor of Dune, Heretics of Dune, and Dune Chapter House. Cool. There's so much more Dune to adapt to the big screen. Yes. And the second book, Dune Messiah, as much as that sounds super daunting, anybody who's picked up the Dune book knows it's thick. That is a yep. chonky book. It's like 900 something pages. Dune Messiah is like 200 pages. Yeah. It is a <laughs> tiny book compared to Dune, but it is absolutely necessary to understand the themes and the messages of the first book. Totally. And that's kind of why Frank wrote it. Like Frank wrote Dune and some portion of the readers back in 1965 were like, so Paul's the hero, right? Like Paul's like the super, yeah. the good guy. Yay, we won. We won. Hey, yeah. Right. They got they they got on a battleship, put up a giant flag and said victory. <laughs> yeah. You know? Remember when they that happened in the sixties? A bunch of people did that. It was wild. <laughs> but that that and that's also part of why Dini had Zendaya playing the role of Chani the way she was in this movie. Right. To make it very, very clear that that's not the case. Nevertheless, Dune Messiah contains some absolutely insane follow-up elements to Dune. Yeah. And Denis, from the offset, has said he intends to do three movies. Yes. And in fact, in February, so just, I mean, as of recording this a couple months ago, he said the screenplay was, quote, almost done, end quote. Which wow. is pretty nuts. That could mean so many things. That but could mean so many things. It's all exciting. <laughs> I've seen in other interviews too. He's talked about like this is now the portion that's very important because you now have to like yeah. take it and make it good enough to justify yeah. taking on this insane IP. Right? Like yeah, it needs completely. to justify itself. It needs to be a really great script. And that happens almost after the point of it being done. Right. Right. And look, to be crystal clear. Yes. As of today's recording, it is April 4th, 2024. As of today. Okay, and of course they had to do it. This is absurd. Hey, everybody. Leo from <laughs> Editing World. <sighs> Later that day, Legendary confirmed that it is working with Villeneuve to develop a third Dune film. This is crazy! We were recording in a timely manner. Okay, so we still don't have confirmation on a timeline we don't have confirmation from warner brothers which is another piece of the puzzle but we do have confirmation reported on by variety that legendary confirmed it's working with villeneuve to develop a third dune film oh okay back to the <laughs> back to the episode but even from villeneuve talking about when he plans to make the movie he has been very upfront with the desire to make it. Yeah. But he has also been clear in saying he wants to make another movie before Messiah, probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at at least like a few years before we get the final movie in his trilogy. It is worth remembering that subsequent movies tend to take a lot less time than initial movies because you have so much of the pre-production done. You have so much of the art book and the art Bible is all figured out. But Nevertheless, we're still probably looking at a few years. Uh, in January, he was at a press conference in South Korea. Denise said, quote, I don't know exactly when I will go back to Arrakis. I might make a detour before just to go away from the sun. For my mental sanity, I might do something in between. Yeah. End quote. That makes sense. Yeah. The last, like, what, six years of his life have been nothing but Dune? <laughs> like <laughs> between Budapest, part one and part Jordan, two. <laughs> like being in these, yeah remote desert locations yeah budapest is not a remote desert location but <laughs> i'm saying yeah jordan mostly in jordan yeah, yeah he's got a lot in his plate yeah that absolutely makes sense he's been all dune all the time for many years and denny villeneuve doesn't strike me as a franchise filmmaker right he doesn't want to right. just be known as the dune guy for the rest of his life yeah totally and I'm sure he'd want to pursue other projects and in fact there are other projects out there that he's working on he's got quite a few on his plate 
just a quick glance at his IMDb page, reveals that he's working on a Rendezvous with Rama adaptation, which is another big sci-fi book. He's also working on a movie about Cleopatra. I would be so stoked to see that myself. Yeah. Of course, he's got Dune Messiah on his plate. And then there's another fourth secret unnamed project that he's also working on. So this dude is working on anywhere from three to four movies simultaneously at the moment. So he's got a lot going on. And we suspect it'll be quite a while before we finally get to see Dune Messiah. We might have to wait for a movie in between. Right. And I think, again, if you are new to this universe, that could be disheartening. That could be like, oh, man, I loved Dune Part 2. I got my popcorn bucket, extra butter, no popcorn. Mm. What do I do knowing that I've got years between now and seeing this thrilling, probably, conclusion to this incredible trilogy? Yep. Well, we are happy to tell you there's so fucking much there's so <laughs> to much. fill your time yes. between now and then. And first up, this might be news to you. I feel like I haven't heard this in the public discourse besides like the yeah. diehard Dune fans. Yeah, no, I agree. There is actually an HBO TV series being worked yes. on called currently Dune Prophecy. It was called Dune Sisterhood for a while. Right. And they are aiming for a fall 2024 release. Okay. We are deeply skeptical that that is the case. Uh, it's it, April already. It is April. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like they recast most of the show two months ago, but it's fine. They they have that. They're they're working on it. We've talked about their fraught production in our like distrans news episodes. Yes, there have been major departures from the show. Showrunners who have left, uh, lead actors who have swapped out. Yep. And at this point, because we don't have any trailer, we don't have any. We only know what basically is on IMDb. We don't know anything about what the show's about. We do know the characters, the main characters are two Harkonnen sisters who are featured in the prequel novel, the Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson prequel novel, uh, Sisterhood of Dune, which talks about the origins and the foundation very early times of the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood. Right. So the same organization that Gaius Helen Moheim and Irulan and Jessica where did their organization get started? Could be a very cool show. And it's actually focusing on two Harkonnen sisters, which is also a very fun angle, right? The Harkonnens yeah. are not all yeah. bad. And the you know they can be protagonists too, depending on when we're looking at it. Right. So we don't know yet exactly what the plot's going to be. But you know HBO has their standard, and we know that they're going to be pouring money into the project. So that could be something that is very cool to watch. Yeah. Even if it's not like up to Denis Villeneuve's bar, right? Yeah, definitely. And here on the podcast, we are planning to at some point check out the Sisterhood of Dune book yeah. by Brian and Kevin. Probably closer to like once we get a trailer for this show and probably closer to release date, we'll like read the book on the podcast and try and get a sense of what maybe the show is inspired by. Yeah. Although it has gone through numerous creative changes <laughs> and like showrunner changes and directors dropping out and lead actors dropping out so it is kind of muddy like what the show is even about at this point uh, we'll just have to wait and see when trailers finally drop it's actually about like three women who take on the daytona 500 <laughs> <laughs> and they're like <laughs> you're like this isn't related to dune even remotely <laughs> what, what is this it's called sisterhood prophecy <laughs> yeah who knows it could be okay moving on from the tv show there's also Dune content for you gamers out there, folks. Sheesh! Sheesh! <laughs> so, currently, the RTS game, real-time strategy game, Dune Spice Wars, is available on PC and consoles. I think it's also on Game Pass if you're a subscriber, so you can download it for free and check it out. Yep. And you and I have both played it. We actually jumped into it back when they were doing like an early release thing, and we have been playing it. Uh, for a while, on and off now, they've released many updates over the past year. Mm -hmm. They just released their very first expansion recently. So the game is definitely thriving. It's up and running. It's getting updated regularly. And the team behind it, Shiro Games, who we've actually chatted with on this show, yeah, 
they are very active with the community and very active to listening to feedback. So if you're interested at all in a Dune video game, this is a real-time strategy game. But if that tickles your fancy, check out Dune Spice Wars. You can get it now on PC and consoles. Yeah, so like the Civilization games or... Starcraft. Starcraft, Age Warcraft. Age of Empires, Warcraft. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so if you like those sorts of games and you want hot Dune characters, my That's God, right. every head of house is so hot. It's yep. insane. Donkey Idaho's in it too. Donkey Idaho. <laughs> America runs on Duncan. There is actually another game as well coming out. Yeah. And we are so fucking stoked for this. This is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game. Yeah called dune awakening so you you take the role of a character on arrakis and you get to adventure around the desert and watch your water supply and avoid avoid that drum sand yep. try to avoid shy halud yep chasing you down build a little base for yourself build a the base footage looks really fun oh my god the base building in particular looks incredible yeah and of course we've been we've talked about that on our show and we will continue to talk about that there's going to be a lot of coverage and we'll probably even make like uh i don't know if, if there will be, will be servers or what yeah we're going to try to figure out a way of playing L- with like our... a clan to play with our listeners yeah or whatever yeah, yeah. whatever the game will call it <laughs> the gom jabar the, the high-handed killers would be a good <laughs> good clan name uh, and, and in fact we've gotten recently some gaming news outlets uh GameSpot and ign talked about it they were given closed door previews at pax east and they had really good things to say about it yeah like yeah. shockingly good things to say about it travis northup at ign wrote quote whether it was the impressively detailed character creation options the intricate rpg systems filled with skill trees and craftables or the absolute insanity of trying to outrun a shy halud or escape a massive sandstorm Dune Awakening appears to be on track to become the sci-fi survival game I've always dreamt of, and I cannot wait to get my hands on it, end quote. Wow. That's pretty incredible. For such an early preview, right? The game, we suspect, is still probably like a a year out, maybe holiday 2024, but more likely next year. Uh, for such an early preview of the game, that's a glowing review, or a glowing preview. I think they're going to do early access soon. Yeah, that's true. Open beta, like server tests, things like that soon-ish. Yes. Yeah. So I think we'll get to see quite a bit of the game soon. I don't know when, maybe a few months, maybe six months, but like, you're right. I think like a formal full release that, you know, they're going to push and everything. Yeah. Probably a ways out. Yeah. It also gave me very like Subnautica vibes. So if you've like enjoyed Subnautica, somewhere between <laughs> Subnautica and like World of Warcraft, <laughs> yeah. but on Arrakis and all Dune shit, very cool. Right. I will say they've been releasing a lot of footage and promotional materials. They had a developer diary recently that we watched live in Discord with our patrons. Yeah. And my excitement for the game has certainly gone up. I'm not someone who plays MMOs typically. I'm not even a PC gamer. I don't own a PC, but I am going to find a way to play this game for <laughs> sure. Not yeah. only as a Dune fan, but genuinely as a gamer, this looks like a really good MMO survival game. And that's a very small genre in the gaming space. I think we have your dominant MMOs out there, the Final Fantasy 14s, the World of Warcrafts, and we rarely see a new entry that really, really takes it by storm. So we'll see if dune awakening can shake up the mmo market yeah here's hoping and again you can be a mentat you can fly a hunter seeker you can become a sword master of guinness yeah there's ornithopters Ornithopters, spice harvesters It, it looks really fun yeah so that's kind of a sampling of things that are coming out in the next year or so to kind of tide us over until denny's eventual unconfirmed <laughs> final movie in the trilogy. <laughs> right, right. But here's here's our sort of pitch. What you should do between now and when Dune Messiah comes out uh-huh. is you should read Dune. You should read the Dune book. If you haven't already, you should read it. It's so good. I have five friends in my life who are not dune fans who saw dune oh, part two and were I, like, I thought you were going to stop the sentence right there <laughs> i have five friends in my life it's a to-do list i've been meaning to break it off with them as soon as possible <laughs> <laughs> but i just haven't hit send on those text messages you know <laughs> who aren't dune fans who watched right. dune part two and were like holy shit that was so much fun i think i'm gonna try reading it 
And hell yeah, every one of them is like, wait, this book is fucking awesome. Yep. It's so good. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dune by Frank Herbert is a foundational novel. The five sequel books are all really cool. Yes. Although books five and six, oh, they're interesting. <laughs> we also love there is an extended Dune universe. Uh, the Dune Encyclopedia was a book that was published in the 80s and includes like the most mundane details from the Dune universe you can mm -hmm. imagine. If you want right. to know how to make spice coffee, it's got your recipe for you. There's a recipe. If you want to know how Fremen make their clothes. Right. What textiles they use. Yeah. There's a there's like eight pages on Fremen textiles. <laughs> it's the most insane book, but very, very cool. And then there is Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson, who Brian Herbert is Frank Herbert's son. Kevin J. Anderson is his longtime writing partner. They have written, I think it's like 19 books at this point, 18 books, something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's getting up there. And yeah. we we don't like their books. Their books tend to be very action-focused, not a lot of depth. The women in the books are written badly <laughs> and usually killed for no real reason there's like an unnecessary amount of certain things like sexual assault and, and random you know characters being murdered they, they're not good they're just not good books right it's fine if you like them no shame to you but we have our issues with brian herbert and the way he handles the estate yeah right again like there's no issue with liking them but there is no argument that they are up to the caliber of Frank's own writing. Right. They simply are not, you know? So, and that that's a big reason on this show, we often ignore them and focus primarily on Frank's work as canon and the Dune Encyclopedia as sort of fun extended canon. Right. But Brian and Kevin's work usually contradicts a lot of that. So we, we tend to avoid it. And again, if you want to hear more about that in detail and hear about the way Brian inherited the estate and how messy the canon is. We have a whole episode about that. So go check that out. Also, we just want to throw in very quickly, if you are someone who likes comic books, uh, I would say I'm a casual comic book reader. I'm not super hardcore, but I love mm -hmm. a good comic book. There are Dune adaptations out there, Dune comic books. Uh, a couple of them cover the first book by Frank Herbert. Some other ones from Boom Studios adapt Brian and Kevin's stories from the Dune universe. We have talked about a few of them on the podcast. If you scroll back through the feed, you can see those episodes. But frankly speaking, we're not huge fans of those comic books. They're all pretty low quality work, and we'd much rather read the actual books themselves. Right. I liked the the Whisper of Caledon Seas. I thought that was kind of cool. But Yeah, the short stories were fun. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Well, if you are, if if I've convinced you, if my five friends who all think that the book's fucking awesome are not wrong and you decide yeah let me try this book out let me read it we have a book club we have a book club series that can help you out because one of the biggest bits of feedback that we've heard about the dune novel is that the first like 150 pages are really fucking dense mm, yep so we have a 10 part read along book club series where we covered literally chapter by chapter the whole book so you can yeah. read a few chapters. Maybe you're feeling good about it. Maybe you're feeling confused. You can listen to our episode that covers those chapters. And we can basically completely spoiler free protecting that first read through. Yep. We tell you, you know, these are the important things to keep in mind moving forward. Here's some fun details, but we keep it light. We keep it fun. So anyway, if you, uh, if you are new and you feel a little daunted by an 890 page book or whatever it is, we've got you. We designed it with you in mind, I promise. But also, hell, we are huge Dune fans. So if you right. are a longtime Dune fan, you've read the book six, seven, ten, fifteen times, and you want to revisit The Sands of Arrakis, our book club episodes also go very deep. We talk about cool interconnected lore, some things from the Dune Encyclopedia that many longtime Dune fans has not even read, which adds a bunch of depth, which is very neat. And we can guarantee that you will learn things that you didn't already know about the Dune universe, which is, yeah. you know, cool. What quality, what breadth. <laughs> it's like we totally. were very careful. We, we got an email recently from a listener who was like, I've been a Dune fan from, for 20 years. And I reread the book recently along with your book clubs. And I, I'm genuinely shocked that I'm still learning stuff 20 years later. I thought I was a Dune expert. Oh, yeah. 
And so, yeah, I mean, we're, we're digging deep. We do an immense amount of research and digging for each of those book club episodes to make them as dense and rewarding as possible. Yeah. And we hope it's a good balance for new listeners just getting into it and also longtime listeners who want, who want those juicy details. We have a good time. And uh, we do. Apparently, we do. people do listening to us. And then, of course, we do have book clubs covering also Dune Messiah, Children of Dune, and God Emperor of Dune. So, the full first four books of Frank's six books, we have full book clubs for. So, if you've been interested, you want to go through that, you know, process, absolutely. Yeah. So, in summary, we just want to say welcome to any new fans and welcome back to longtime fans, right? Like this is such an exciting time to be a Dune fan. We've said it before many times on this show, yeah. but there is no better time to become or to be a Dune fan than right now. We are at peak Dune and it will continue for years to come. So we're super excited that you're here. We're super excited that you found this show, that you're listening. We want to welcome you to our nerdy little community of Dune and science fiction fans we have so much content for you to explore and consume. And beyond the Villeneuve blockbuster films, there are many months and many years of amazing Dune content ahead. So if you are ready to make Dune your personality, <laughs> we're here for you. Let's do it. Indeed we are. So from there, let's wrap up by sharing some of our plans here at Gamjabar. Yes. So that yes. you can you can kind of brace yourself for the insanity that is the next few months of this podcast <laughs> because we've got some stuff locked and loaded for you we are resuming on the public feed our god emperor of doom book club which is basically uh getting public listeners to the end of that crazy insane book right which is very exciting especially because the last part of that book's insane true now patrons have had that book completed for the last couple of months basically we wrapped up i think a month and a half ago or so and they get episodes three months early so they're already done and while we're waiting for you all to catch up we are going to be releasing some fun bonus episodes on patron covering things like dune short stories some dune fan fiction it's all very very cool and soon we're going to be posting a poll on patreon to get your feedback and ideas on what you would like to hear in some of those bonus episodes. You know, we've tossed around, we've talked about ideas, other sci-fi books. We've talked about covering Foundation. We've talked about covering The Expanse, right? Things like that. So we'll be posting that poll soon. You know, if you're a patron, keep an eye out for it. Make sure to vote so that we know what you'd like to hear. Yeah, definitely. Now, of course, the big question that many of our listeners have is... Where's the Heretics of Dune book club? <laughs> yeah. If if we're done with God Emperor, let's get into the next book. I can't wait. I've been waiting for you to start so I can begin this book. We know. We are just as excited as you are. And currently, we are building out the schedule. We usually schedule the entire book club in advance so that we always know due dates and reading assignments and all of that. Mm -hmm. it makes it easy for you to read along. Makes it easy for us to keep on track with production. That schedule is still being built. And we don't have an exact locked and loaded date yet for the start of Heretics. But we have narrowed the window down, and it's looking like Heretics of Dune will officially kick off either the first week or the second week of June. So the first Friday or the second Friday of June. Nice. Is when the first episode of Heretics will drop. And then, of course, as always, we, we will work our way through that book, chapter by chapter, as we've done for the first four books. And... Like we said earlier, Heretics and Chapter House take a wild left turn from yeah. the first few Dune books. And if you thought God Emperor of Dune was weird, then you better buckle the fuck up. Okay? Yeah. Because frankly, you are not ready. And honestly, I am not ready to cover this book. It should be a fun ride for all of us. And I can't wait to get into it. So stay tuned. June, folks, is when Heretics of Dune is beginning. Let me hit you with some words. Sure. Chair dog. <laughs> Slig. <laughs> Futar. <laughs> that's that's going to be 20% of our content <laughs> in this book club. 
it's just, just hurling hurling from <laughs> the shit frank decided to include it's so yeah. good it's so much fun it's so good but yeah i, I also wait. do not feel ready for that <laughs> well we're gonna wrap up now uh but we have some production housekeeping things to take care of some kind of final tidbits for you some yes ganja bar morsels if you would hello and the first thing i'm happy to say i am god i am i am working i am working hard on drafting up some new merchandise ideas Ooh. very exciting uh, i had a long conversation in discord with our listeners uh thank you everyone who contributed really really exciting i have a to-do list that is 18 items long 18 wow. distinct merchandise ideas long uh and i'm basically sketching them up now so we are hoping to launch new products and also hopefully a better like merchandise store platform later this summer yep so if you are interested in getting something really really cool we're also going to be as part of this i'm going to be maybe remastering and reintroducing some things that we've had in the past that we don't have currently uh so keep your eye out for that and let us know yeah, either in Discord or you can email us what kind of custom design Dune stuff you want and you'd like because, of course, happy to provide that for you. Yeah. And if you happen to know someone who supplies quality cod pieces, we're on the lookout. So <laughs> yeah, let us know. We need a cod piece type guy. Of product. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, as we say goodbye here, we do want to say that this will be our last new episode for the rest of this month. We're going on a two-week break, basically because we've had a very exhausting month and a half of nonstop wall-to-wall production, doing movie coverage and a Lego brand deal and a bunch of other stuff. So it's been very exciting. It's also been very draining uh, to watch Dune Part 2 blow up, to watch our podcast blow up, to watch Dune in general become such a popular thing. And, of course, all of that coverage, this, like, last six weeks of nonstop production takes countless hours of work, and we've mentioned it before on the podcast, but this show, this production is not our full-time jobs. We also have full-time jobs to keep the lights on and pay our bills, and so Gam Jabbar becomes a lot of early mornings, late nights, and weekend work, and that can certainly start to drain my battery after uh, many, many weeks of nonstop production. So we're going to take some time to recharge and relax to be able to bring the absolute best work we can to you and to be putting out the best student content that we can. We can't do that when our batteries are low. It's true. So it's been an amazing journey these past four years watching this podcast and the mm -hmm. Dune fandom grow and blow up in a truly unprecedented way. And we just want to say here at the end, thank you so much for your support and for listening to the show, for sharing it with friends, for reading the book, for diving into this fandom with us feet first. It means the world to us. Right. And we are just super grateful at the end of the day. And we love you all so much. And we'll be back first week of May with brand new episodes. We'll see you then. Well, friends, there is no real ending. It's just the place where you stop the recording. But this podcast is always one step beyond logic, so help spread the word of Muad'Dib and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And be sure to check out the other shows on the Lord Party Podcast Network on loreparty.com. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at lore underscore party. We're also on TikTok at Gomjabar Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And remember... Whoever controls the podcast controls the universe. We'll see you on the golden path. <laughs>